going to Norway tomorrow. <laughs> I'm so pumped. I've been waiting for this moment to finally fly FPV in Norway. That's literally like the reason why I learned how to fly FPV. And uh, this episode is sponsored by ArcGrid and that's why I was able to uh, buy this fancy hand warmer <laughs> for my drone flag. It actually works really great. Just doing like the final testing before I meet up with the whole gang in Norway. We have a pretty, pretty incredible crew. I think you might know some of the people on there. So, oh, excited to shoot this project. But today we're going to talk about how I edit in Final Cut Pro 10, my whole process, the basics of Final Cut Pro. What is with my hair right now? So I've been editing in Final Cut Pro 10 for about a year now. I switched over from Premiere, also on the 14 inch M1 Max, incredible little machine. And I feel like I've figured out a pretty simple, easy workflow. Because I'm optimizing for speed with YouTube, it means I'm finding the simplest solution in most cases, which in turn is great for the basics of Final Cut Pro 10. Can we just say Final Cut or do we have to keep saying Final Cut Pro 10? This is literally how I edit every single one of my videos. First off, let's open this bad boy up and we get this, which for some people it's super scary and for others, it's, it's actually fairly simple. I think a lot of other programs are scarier than this one. Let's not worry about all of this. Let's just take this one step at a time. And let's start off with a new project, which is actually called a library in Final Cut. And this took me a little bit to figure out, like I, I'm used to the Premiere workflow and then we have all these different words for this kind of the same thing, how to treat libraries, events and projects. And I figured out for me, the best way is to treat the library just like it's a Premiere project. So I start a new library for every single video project that I do, just like I would with Premiere. And in my opinion, this is really important, A, because the file size of that project file or library stay much smaller. And if you were just adding in video project after video project in the same library, it really quickly becomes just a hot mess of stuff. And there's also something very important to do at the end with your project file or library once you've finished your video and export and everything, which we'll talk about later on. So let's start off with a new library, AKA video projects. You can go to file or just click here to open one or start a new new one. Now I have every video project organized the same way. It's super important to have all of your things in one folder, your footage, your renders, your music, your thumbnails, everything from that video project in one folder. That way, if you need to move it onto a different computer or back it up somewhere, everything is there. And you're not having a bunch of missing files that then you have to relink and just all that nightmare. Everything should be in one folder. And then it's time to bring in some footage. You can just right click import or hit command I. Just make sure you checked leave the files in place and not have them copied to your library. You don't need another duplicate inside of your library. I like to keep my footage where it is all organized nicely. So make sure to go to preferences and import and leave files in place. I have my footage here and the music in this folder. And actually the easiest way to import all of this is to just drag it in. And notice, cause I dragged that folder, it made these keyword collections. And if I had footage from different cameras, I could have different folders for my FPV footage, for the Sony footage. And when I drag it in, it would make those keyword collections nice and easy, nice and fast. If I wanna find my drone footage real quick, easy. I don't do anything else with the events and all of that stuff. I keep it real simple like I said. Then let's start a new project, which is like a sequence in Premiere Pro. Double click here where it says new project, and you can either choose automatic settings, which means when you bring in a clip, it'll adjust to those settings 
settings, but I do custom settings because my clips might be different formats. For example, the Insta360 footage might be different format from the drone clips and my Sony footage. So I'm gonna choose what I want. And so you can choose either 1080 or 4K, whatever resolution you want. I've been doing a lot of two to one aspect lately, but we'll just stick to 4K for now. Now make sure you do not make this mistake. 24 frames per second is the correct frame rate. Just kidding, you can do 30 frames per second if you want it to look bad. <laughs> Just kidding, you can do 30 frames per second if you're forced to. For rendering, I do ProRes LT because it's great quality, but the file sizes are much smaller. So again, I, I, don't, I don't like these huge library <laughs> sizes. It, it really threw me off in the beginning. And so I kind of try to keep that down as much as possible because a lot of times you're like, I just have a little bit of space on my computer and I don't feel like transferring. And so yeah, small libraries are good. Then some people, like to scrub through all their footage and it's kind of handy in Final Cut, but I find that to be terribly slow. So what I do is the big dump. I just take all of my footage, every single video clip, and I just dump it into the timeline. The reason I like to do this, I think it's faster, but also I'm not forgetting about some clips that I might have taken. It means that I have to go through each clip and figure out, do I want this clip in there or not? Delete it, get rid of it. But I'm going through every single clip that I filmed for that video. And how do we do that real fast? keyboard shortcuts. I've made a few different videos on keyboard shortcuts, but they are so important. I can't stress it enough. I know it's a little bit tedious and annoying when you're starting out and you're just trying to figure things out, but trust me, look up the keyboard shortcuts every chance you have. It will speed up everything by so many hours, it's crazy. I'm not gonna go through it all, but basically what I try to do is keep all of my keyboard shortcuts on one side of the keyboard. So I have them all to the left side, so I don't have to move my hand around at all. And my favorite keyboard shortcuts I have on Q and W, and those are start trim and end trim. And how you use these is you can move your playhead to wherever you want your clip to start, and then you press Q, start trim, and it will make a cut and delete all the rest of that clip in the beginning. So really quickly, one button, you're done, you have that starting point, and then you move your playhead to where you want that clip to end, and then you press Q and it cuts and deletes the rest of the clip really fast, super easy. These are by far the most important keyboard shortcuts that I could recommend if you wanna edit fast and easy. I also have cut on X, so that just adds a cut right away. So instead of having to pull out the blade tool and then find out where I'm, I just move the playhead, press X, and it cuts right away. And the other keyboard shortcut that I use quite often is E, which is the trim tool. And that means I can just adjust the exact in and out points of a clip really quickly. So let's say I did the QW thing, found the, found the start and end of the clip, and then I just, it's a little bit off, so I just wanna adjust everything a little bit over. I can slide it so it changes the in and out points. I don't use this as much, but there are certain occasions where this really makes sense to use. And you can change the keyboard shortcuts to whatever you want them to be, whatever format you want. So when I say things like I use Q, I use W, those are the trim start, trim end, and I've changed those myself. They might be by default, but I've probably changed them myself. And all of this B-roll is from Artgrid, the sponsor of this video. Look how good this footage is. It's possibly the best platform to get super high quality footage for your videos with an affordable, unlimited subscription plan. Arcrid makes it really easy to search the footage by video theme, shot type, or even the number or types of people that you need in your footage. And the absolute best part about Arcrid is that when you find that one clip that you like, it isn't just one clip. There are minimum three and up to a hundred different clips from that same scene or location or narrative, which they call a story. So for example, for this footage that I'm editing right now, instead of having to find a bunch of like clips that sort of match together, the lighting's kind of off, they're just like a bunch of randomness. I just find a few that I like and then I can download a whole bunch from that same scene or narrative. One simple subscription gives you unlimited access to all of the footage on Artgrid. And the really cool part is when you download something from Artgrid, it becomes yours to use 
forever. Even if you stop your subscription, you could still use that footage. That's pretty cool. Thanks so much, Artgrid, for making an incredible product for us filmmakers, and thank you for sponsoring this video. Okay, so back to the edit. Typically, I have some sections that have music in the background and some sections that don't. And when there is music in the background, I like to edit to the beat of the song. I think it just makes it a lot more interesting and a little bit more engaging. It just makes the song and the visuals fit together much better. So let's bring in a song for our little intro here. And then I'm gonna go to the first clip and I'm gonna figure out where I want that clip to start. I'm gonna hit that shortcut. Q, remember that's trim start and that's gonna cut and move it right away. Now notice the song also moved. Uh, that's one of my biggest pet peeves sometimes with Final Cut Pro is this magnetic timeline where everything is kind of stuck together and when you move one thing, it's probably moving something else also. In some cases, it's really great and in some cases like here, it's just annoying to me. So in this case, the song is actually stuck to that first clip. So when I move that first clip around, it also moves the song. There's this little connection that's indicating that the song is attached to that clip and we could change that connection. We can move the playhead to a different clip and then hit command option and then left click on that song and it's gonna change it so it's connected to that next clip now. But even better, you can also kind of stop the sticking, the magnetic timeline if you go to your tools and grab position. Now when you go and trim that first clip, it doesn't move everything around. Instead, it just adds a blank space base in there for you. So if the magnetic timeline is getting annoying, try the position tool, that's my advice. Then we can go back to the normal, select, find the beat where I want this clip to end, and then I'm just gonna hit W, that's it. And I'm gonna do this over and over again, QW for the next clips in that little B-roll section. Sometimes I'm using trim to finesse the in and out points a little bit, but basically I'm just going QW, QW, making sure that it's on the beats of the song. Super fast, super easy editing to the song and it didn't take long at all. Sometimes I use trim to finesse the in and out points and then sometimes if one clip has multiple good spots to it, I'll hit Q and then I'll find where I want that first clip to end and I'll cut it with X, that's what I have for cut. And then again, I'll go find where's that next good section, Q and then W or X if there's a bunch of different ones that I wanna grab from that same one. But that's basically it, Q, W, Q, W, Q, W, super fast, super easy editing to the song and it didn't take long at all. And I think it really helps to edit to the beats. It's not hard, it's not rocket science, just listen to the beat, use the little pointers, the arrows on your keyboard to find where those beats are and then just QW. If the QW isn't working, that's because your keyboard shortcuts are different. So you can change your keyboard shortcuts to whatever you want them to be. And some clips just didn't fit, so I just deleted them. But again, I've gone through every single clip, so I know I didn't miss any good stuff that I had filmed. And then we get to our A roll or talking head stuff. And a lot of times I will get rid of the song or at least bring it down a lot so you barely hear it. So we can fade down the song, just add some keyframes by option clicking on the volume and then set another keyframe and then just drag it down. Usually if you want music in the background of talking, you want that to be around minus 26, minus 30 dB in the background, some, somewhere there. And then we do the exact same trim start and trim end for editing the A roll talking head. Whenever a good take starts, I hit Q and then I listen and then it ends there and I hit W or in this case, I would use X to cut it and then again, I would find where's the next good take start, hit Q, and then I would find out where's that and hit X. I'm just going through and finding all of the full complete sentences or thoughts or things that I said. And then we can add some B-roll on top to make it a little bit more interesting, add a little bit of spice. And I don't really like this part in Final Cut as much. I like having different tracks. I like having, you know, the second and third track for B-roll, but now we have this kind of like stuck mess thing and you gotta sometimes lift clips from the main story. It gets really confusing, I think, at times. And the more B-roll and more stuff you have going on, the crazier it gets. I think for simple editing, Final Cut is incredible. When it gets more complex, 
I just don't think it's as good as something like Premiere. Okay, the edit is done and this is when I'll usually add some motion graphics. Click on the titles generator sidebar. Now I've been using a lot of motion VFX. I think they're really high quality and really easy to use. They're nice straight out of the box, but then there's also quite a bit of versatility or customization that you can do to make it fit your style. They do cost money, but I really do think plugins like this are 100% worth it. I'm not getting paid to say that. I'm not making any money from that. I use them all the time. They're really handy. Then we have to deal with the audio. The audio straight out of the camera isn't super good. It sounds like this. And so we want to spice it up a little bit. And for me, it's really easy. It's literally just drag and drop. That's it, now I'm done, ready to go. Basically, I just drag it onto one clip and then copy and paste it to all of the others. And I highly recommend using something like this preset. You can actually buy this preset from my store. You don't have to, you can make your own preset, but start with a preset. It's so much better than always having the same compression, same EQ. Just have a preset, drag and drop, you're basically done. Just change the level so nothing is going over zero or anything like that. That's it, really easy. I can't stress this enough. If you are not using presets for the things that you're doing constantly over and over again, you are wasting your time. I use presets for the audio, for the motion graphics, and for the color grade, which is the next part. We gotta actually color grade this. That doesn't look very good yet. And so all you have to do is add an adjustment layer to the top, it'll be in your titles generator. If you don't have an adjustment layer yet, just look up adjustment layer, plugin, Final Cut, they're for free. You just have to get one, they don't come built in for some weird reason. I recently made a full color grading video on my process in Final Cut Pro. So if you wanna know more about my workflow for color grading, go and watch that video. But basically, I just put the adjustment layer over the whole thing, and again, I have a preset, I just drag and drop it. It has my LUTs, it has different effects, it's got a little bit of grain, all of this stuff that I like done instantly, and then I just need to color correct. If you don't know what color correcting is, go and watch my color grading video and it'll help you. Or one of my color correcting videos, those help too. All of my color grades right now use my new Cine Sony LUTs, which are basically like a conversion LUT that gets you to a nice contrast and saturation, and then you can choose what look you want and dial that in. It's a really streamlined, nice workflow for color grading your footage pretty quickly. Okay, so the edit is done. Now we're good to go. We need to get this on YouTube. And honestly, I think you can just go to File, Share, YouTube and Facebook, and then hit the settings and go to better quality for the compression. That's usually what I do. It's pretty great quality. I think for you, it'll be more than enough and then save the video to your folder and that's done. The only thing that I do once I'm done exporting and I've uploaded the video and I don't need to make any more changes, I go and delete all of the user generated files. So Final Cut is actually rendering or making these files to make your editing smoother and faster, but that library, like I was talking about that library, gets to be a really big file size and kind of for no reason. They're just duplicates of the things that you have. You don't need them anymore. So make sure before you back this folder onto a hard drive or a RAID or wherever, delete the user generated files. Otherwise you just have pointless space being taken up by your library project. And it doesn't change the project in any way. You can still open up the same way. It just won't run as smoothly right away. It'll have to do some of the rendering out in the background again. But that is my very simple workflow of how I edit in Final Cut Pro 10. If there's any questions you guys have, comment down below and I'll try to answer some of those or make a whole new video on something that might be unclear to you guys. Editing, when you're starting out is very scary, but the more you do it, learn, make, repeat, can't really see it because it's blurry, learn, make, repeat, it becomes much, much easier. The first time you open it, you be like, these, I don't know what is going on, nosebleed, brain headache right away. You do a few projects and you start figuring it out and really quickly it just becomes a tool for you to make the videos that you want to make. So don't get scared. If you're just learning the basics, watch some other videos, some other tutorials, start getting in there and trying it out, and soon enough, you will be a pro. Okay, that's it for me. I hope this helped you guys. I've always been fascinated with how other people edit, so here is literally how I edit my videos. 
take that for what it's worth. I hope it helped you. I will see you guys in Norway. All right, bye.